OpenPoint's inventory module gives you access to all of the materials at your warehouses. This includes updated counts, unit prices, and overall inventory value. You can also see what's on order and which materials are scheduled to be issued to jobs that are both approved and even jobs that are still in the proposed date. You can also report on the inventory status uh, using a, a variety of different reports that we provide. So initially here, we're going to take a look at the inventory dashboard. This is the first screen you come to when you go into the inventory module. At the top, you see recent materials, and each one of these cards represents a material record in the system that you've recently looked at. So the most recent material will show here on the left, and then it'll shove the other cards over to the right over time. And to be able to look at a material record, you can just simply click on the card and it'll take you to that record. Uh, we'll come back to the screen in a little bit here. Um, the other section here it shows is the warehouse inventory. And so these cards uh, are representative of each of your warehouses. So in this example, we have a warehouse one and we have warehouse two. We can have several others if, uh, if those were present. And the number here indicates the number of active inventory records that you have in the system. So for every material that you have at warehouse one, uh, we would see what's there. Now when I click on this card, this will actually show me the, the live inventory information that I currently have out there. So I can see my materials, which are represented by the unit code here and description. Uh, this is showing the warehouse that we're in, the current counts, unit price, and then the location within the warehouse where the material is currently at. You can also search for materials uh, right from the screen. And let's try to find some 40-foot poles. So I'm just going to type in pole, and it does a search. And what you can see here is there's duplication. So it's actually going to show me uh, both materials um, that we have of this 40 or 30 foot class 5 wood pole that are at the various warehouses. So uh, this is the same record. Uh, these two are the same actual material, but the, they're in two different warehouses. So it's showing us uh, each of those warehouses and what those current counts and unit prices happen to be. So let's take a look at the uh, 40 foot class 5 wood pole here. So I went into the warehouse one uh, version of this, and this is the uh, inventory overview screen. So it's giving us an overview of uh, the overall inventory information. So let's take a look at the various sections here. So I've got the, uh, the inventory setup, and this is gonna show us kind of the kind of key values about the inventory record. Um, it includes the location, the row shelf bin, the current count that's there, the unit price, and the value. If I click on more info, it's going to give us even more information about um, the inventory. And so I've got other values, including uh, we have a default plan account that shows up on transaction records. And we'll take a look at that, at that in a little bit. We've got a low inventory point, which uh, on certain reports, will it'll flag if we're below a certain threshold, and that material will show up to be reordered. And then if there is need to be a reorder that occurs, this will give you, the order count will give you uh, the, the default or standard um, amount that you normally order. In both of those values, the load inventory report and the order count can be zero. They aren't actually required. Uh, below that, we have the current count in inventory, unit price and value. And on the other side, we actually have the material details. And so you can get to both the uh, inventory counts and, and location information, as well as the material data itself. So we've got the unit code and the description of the material issue and purchase unit of measure the systems that the material can be used in. So if we wanted uh, to have these poles be available in our water system, you can just click on that and check on water, and it would let you do that. Uh, there's also a category option. So uh, this can be categorized in a variety of different ways. This list is utility specific, so you can come up with your own list of categories and assign materials accordingly. And then the track inventory option is for you know, things that you want to track and actually, uh, you know, do an inventory on or audit, you know, once a year, once a quarter, however you might do that, uh, versus the ones that might be minor materials or ones you're not as concerned about closely tracking. So let's go back to the overview page. So right below the inventory setup, we have material status. And now that one is showing an inventory count of 17. So we saw that we had an inventory count here of nine, but that's just at warehouse one. Material status is the overall counts that are available across all the warehouses. So in all warehouses, we have 17, and we also have uh, two that are expected issues. An expected issue means that it's on a work order, that work order has been approved, 
but the material hasn't been issued yet. So that just gives you a better idea of you know what is really available to you, and that's what that value right below that is that uh, available category there. It's really taking that inventory count of 17, subtracting the two expected ones, and showing you what's left afterwards. Uh, right below that, we have the on order, and that quantity is going to be on any purchase orders that are in the system where the poll has been ordered but not yet received into the inventory uh, system yet. And then right below that uh, are proposed issues. So that means that the item is on a work order. The work order status is proposed, so it's not been approved yet. We don't know for sure that it's going to go through, uh, but that uh, is showing you just so you have that awareness. So you know, you know, after you've looked at the total inventory count, you've looked at the expected issues, you know what really is available, and then you can see what's coming in, um, and then also what may be going out in the future based on that proposed work order status. So the next section over is transactions. This is just a grid that's going to show you all of the transactions that basically have occurred over time to get the quantity and unit pricing to where it's at. So any issues, any uh, time the count or value was changed in any way, you'll see those show up. Uh, so you can see that in the grid. It'll show all the records with a, a um, scroll box there so you can scroll down and see the rest. Or you can click on the menu button here and just say export and it will uh, go into Excel and it'll just dump those out into a little bit of a bigger you know, form to work with that shows more of the details, some more columns of data. And then you've got uh, these slicer controls on the right so you can slice and dice the data that way. Uh, you can also do your sorting using the columns uh, headers at the top. And of course, using all of the capabilities that Excel has to offer as well if you wanna be able to work with a large set of those transactions. That's one really good way of doing that. Okay, on the right here, um, we have the material overview. We'll come back to that in a little bit. This inventory setup is the same as the more info button over here. Uh, reports will give you access to certain inventory reports, and uh, we'll cover those in a separate video. Um, and then the transactions here. So there are various transactions that impact either the quantity or the value uh, of inventory, or even both. And so let's do, um, let's take a scrap, for example. So that's just going to remove something from inventory. So I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to scrap one of those polls um, and I'm going to leave this default plan account here. Normally, you'd probably change that to indicate the maybe the category of the, uh, the material or maybe you just have a clearing account. However you want to do that, that's kind of uh, up to you to how you decide how you want to use the plan account values there. And then we can put a description. Let's say we say bad poll uh, must be discarded. And then uh, below that, it's gonna show you the inventory impact. And so right now it's showing us that we have a current count of nine. And then after this change, after the scrap function occurs, it's gonna reduce it down to eight. And then same with the value. We show you, see the current value of 7,200 and then after the scrap, it's gonna be 6,400. And so to create that, I just hit the create button and then it adds that at the top and then it reduced our count over here and also our value. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the material overview section here. So the material overview just zeroes in on just the material record itself. So it's gonna show us um, things in the material setup that are particular to the material. So we've got our category, our issue unit of measure, and our purchase unit of measure. And just like with the inventory uh, setup screen, you can get to the materials details here. And these are, these are the exact same set of fields, so I won't go over those again. Uh, just another way of getting to those and, and modifying those if you need to do that. And then below that, we have material status. And again, that was exactly the same as the, uh, the inventory uh, overviews version of it. So just giving us the overall counts and what's expected to come in and, and uh, go out potentially so that we know what's going on with the, uh, with the numbers there. And then we have a couple of different grids. So the inventory grid is showing us across all the warehouses. It is saying here is uh, the current uh, counts and unit prices there, as well as the location in the uh, particular uh, warehouse. And so if I click on that, I can actually go back to the inventory overview page where we were just were at. So maybe I wanted to check back in and see what was there at warehouse one. I can go back to the material review and then go and drill into warehouse two very easily and get that information. So it's really smooth and easy to go back and forth between uh, the inventory side of things and the material, and then going back, it just kind of goes back and forth uh, very nicely. 
Uh, below that, it's going to show us any construction units where the material has been assigned. And so in this case, we have just a, a P40-5 uh, assembly, and it's got the pole on it. So if I click on that, it's going to go into the assemblies system, and it's going to go right to that particular record. And I can see all the details about the, uh, the P40-5 construction unit, uh, including all the capital, maintenance, and operations plan accounts information. Um, we can see if it's linear or not, installation and removal hours, um, and then you know anything that's associated with that we can easily get to, and we can easily go right back to the material once we're done with that. And so, so that really covers the very basic uh, capabilities of the inventory system. There are a number of reports that take advantage of all this data. Uh, we're we're going to save that for a future set of videos. Um, that also includes an inventory auditing process, uh, which has just kind of a, a basic framework for being able to do an inventory process where it generates a lot of the data and prep work for you and then uh, allows you to enter in any changed inventory information and then input the results at the end.